lose your life as you know it is ancient history. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that most of the schools we see in movies and TV, read about in novels, or even hear about in songs are terrible, rotten places? What is this place? It is a prison for children. Where you're likely to get pig's blood dumped on you at prom, get beaten up on the playground, or humiliated by classmates and teachers alike. We take for granted that K-12 education is like living in Orwell's 1984 or serving a prison sentence. But there are exceptions, in fiction and in real life. When you get to choose where you go to school, you're guaranteed a better experience because you've picked a place where you actually want to be. And that will treat you well because they know you can leave if you want to. Currently, only about a quarter of K-12 students attend something other than their local public schools, places like charters, magnets, or private institutions, or homeschool. If more kids had more choice, schools would do a better job of responding to their specific needs and helping them become the best version of themselves. There's no one-size-fits-all in education any more than there is in clothing or shoes. Here are three fictional schools which are great, not because they're right for everyone, but because they meet the unique needs of their particular students. Hello, Scott. Welcome to the School for the Gifted. You're enrolled. Entry to Professor X's Academy of Superpowered Mutants is by invitation only, but it comes with a free ride and a promise to learn how to control and master each student's special powers. Professor X and his faculty hold everyone to exacting high standards, but also make sure nobody slips through the cracks, the sort of attention that is all too lacking in schools that take students and the tuition dollars they represent for granted. Hang on back there. Here we go. Welcome. To Sky High. 2005's Sky High showcased another superhero high school, one filled with comic takes on traditional school drama. But it also featured gym classes that Three actually seemed to worth taking. Your opponents. And save the citizens. Uh, remember when we used to use real citizens? Yes. Uh, <laughs> the students are quickly assigned to either a hero track if they display superpowers or a sidekick track if they don't. Oh. Hero. And a handsome one at that. But unlike too many real life schools, the kids are able to change courses if they demonstrate new abilities. We're strong. He's super strong. Dear Mr. Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. You're a wizard, Harry. And of course, there's Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry the school at the center of the Harry Potter series. Modeled on hidebound British boarding schools and century-old universities like Oxford and Cambridge, Hogwarts is filled with bullies, arbitrary rules, customs, and demanding teachers. But in the end, what makes this institution unique is the philosophy of its headmaster, Albus Dumbledore, who forces his greatest pupil to master not only the magical arts, but a basic philosophical maxim, too. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. These places are wonderful because they don't take their students for granted. They take them seriously and push them toward excellence and accomplishment while treating them as unique individuals. Schools don't need to be dreary, downbeat hell holes, whether we're talking movies or real life. If more of us get to choose where we go, we'll be smarter, happier, and maybe even better adjusted. And our movies will eventually reflect that. No McFly ever amounted to anything in the history of Hill Valley. Yeah, well, history is going to change.